there is actually room for everybody. You always get people who want to see a gynecologist, you will see another one who wants to see a surgeon, and another one to see internal medicine, but there are still very many other Kenyans who have no choice, and this is where the family medicine people are needed. The poor who need emergency care and who need people who have that, those skills, these are the people. We wanted to improve the health of our people. The only way we can be able to reduce disease burden is engaging uh, family physicians because uh, they can be able to go to the community, they can be able to talk to the families, they can be able to talk to the entire society within the community. That way we can be able to reach more people within a very short time. And that's why we want to embrace it because the health of our people will be able to be improved and um, we'll reduce uh, the disease burden within the communities. We'll also reduce the cost of treatment within the hospitals where, where, where they are working because they'll be advising communities and they'll be training them and they'll be... Um, so prevention will be on the higher side. More of people will have, will have known how to prevent diseases within their communities and within their households than those ones who will be coming to the hospitals for treatment. It seems that family medicine is a specialty for the rural areas. But as we can see in Nairobi, the family doctor is also working in big cities. I feel the need for a family physician is to cover both a rural-based facility as well as offer primary care in an urban setting. Typically you'll find that we have two shifts in the clinic. Uh, we have a morning shift and an afternoon shift and in each shift there are three doctors manning the clinic and patients are booked to a particular doctor so that you can have continuity. So if you see me, for example, the next visit, the next scheduled visit, you come back and see the same doctor. That affords continuity and opportunities for health promotion and uh, coordinated care. What I want us to do is to take a deep breath mm. and hold that breath mm. and then blow through this as hard and as fast as possible. So it's a deep breath in. Held my breath and then I blow out at once. Eh? once, at once eh? This is the center where all wellness checks are done and health promotion activities done in the hospital. We also have a lot of our patients coming in for chronic disease care, uh, hypertension, diabetes, asthma. Okay, that's uh, not as good as the first time. And then blow out now the last time. Before you'll find that somebody will come in to the Aga Khan hospital and be seen by three or four specialists. But by doing this in a more coordinated, cost-effective way, it saves them on money and they get appropriate uh, uh, referrals. So already patients give us good feedback that the care is more coordinated and more cost-effective. Dr. Dino is meeting Dr. Joy. She's almost done with her family medicine training. So she knows what you learn and what they teach to help you to become a good family doctor. Yes. I'm Dino. Nice you're meeting you. Nice meeting you. You had agreed to meet me. Yes. And tell me more about your training. Uh, welcome. As a family physician. Thank you. Yeah, Karibu. Okay. We are doing our ward rounds. Okay. So this is a patient we have who has renal failure. Okay. And uh, on a daily basis we do ward rounds. If you're joining, mm -hmm. in your first year, it's basically to revise what you did mm -hmm. in your med school years mm -hmm. to try and remember mm -hmm. in terms of the medicine department, the department of pediatrics, going through the clinicals, mm -hmm. going through doing your ward rounds, and then also outpatient care and the casualty care. Oh. But that's basically the first year trying to go through what you learned, history taking. 
Another aspect which is important in the family medicine curriculum is research. During the training you need to make a thesis. During this period they expected to write a research proposal and get it approved by the, the Moore University uh, ethics body. And this is a condition for them to qualify to sit for the part one exams. Uh, we do place a very heavy emphasis on uh, formative assessment uh, evaluation. It forms 50% of the expectation of the grade for them to pass at the end of the first part of the training. I believe that we need research done by Africans for Africans. And this is because we have heavily relied on westernized data which is not applicable to the African population. Our diseases may be related, but the way our bodies interact is very different. So we need data for Africans by Africans. And I'm passionate about getting first authors who are African uh, family, fam family physicians and predominantly in primary care. Now when we come into part two, we have the special courses, which one is the clinician as a teacher, you're expected to be capable of oh, okay. teaching, teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, not only the interns as we used to do as MOs, mm -hmm. but now at a higher level, you're okay. like a mini consultant right. in your part two session. Mm -hmm. Then there's the part where we do community-oriented, uh, patient-centered care. Okay where we go into the community, like now this patient we have seen, he's an elderly patient who may be in need, when on assessment, needs further care. We need to know why he's gotten to this phase, who are his caretakers back at home, and the community understands his condition so that he doesn't keep coming back. I forgot one thing. We also have palliative care, like this patient okay. is a patient who would need palliative care mm -hmm. as a terminal mm -hmm. care patient. Mm -hmm. Palliative care is not offered in other, in other courses, courses, but one special thing with family medicine is palliative care is also offered, and that makes us mm -hmm. at a different level. Habari ya leo? Salimia. Ukwaje leo? He had severe malaria. Okay. He's on quinine. He, yes, he had a jaundice. But it's clearing because yesterday it was more deep. But today he's still complaining of abdominal pain. So I would like to examine it and see. Kidogo nieze kukupima. Takufungua tu kidogo. Baka hapo na leo naona uko smart. Pumu. 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 Baba, kidogo ni kuongeleshe. It's good to have partnership with the family. So that is why I want to talk with the father. And that's part of family medicine. You have to involve the family. Baba. Ananiambia ameshindwa na kukula mingi mara moja. Patia kidogo kido, kidogo kwa siku. Are you joining family medicine? No, Have I convinced you enough? Not yet, not yet. Ah. So we are seeing this lady. Muna salimiana aje na kimara kwezi. Chamuge? Ah, me sing. Abaria leo. Mzuri. Sa wapole sta kuongelesha sana. Acha ni muongelesha mstana yako. Sa wa. So part of family medicine is uh, communication skills. Yeah, I see you. Mastered that. <laughs> Was it the same as an MO, or do you feel you have improved? I have really improved. I learned a lot. Um, we used to come and call the patients patient bed or patient with, okay. uh, with this and that. Mm. And I remember there's once when we were medical officers, and the patient said, I am not John this. My name <laughs> is Swen. So, okay. so part of it is to be able to communicate with your patient based on their name be able to be loud and clear. We also learn how to 
break bad news, mm -hmm. to be able to talk and, and, console. and console their relatives and touching them. The fact that you put a hand on them makes them feel much better and much more appreciated mm -hmm. that you're coming close to them and that way they are able to open up. Mm. Zaidi, <laughs> I smiled there. Yesterday she looked depressed mm. because uh, the sister was not eating and she felt probably the sister is just being mm -hmm. difficult. But we talked with her and today at least the sister is getting up. Mm -hmm. mm. But that, you see a lot of that in palliative cases? Yes. Okay. Mm. A lot of giving up from the relatives. Okay. So, mm. so your palliative let's say, rotation, how does it prepare you in terms of dealing with palliative cases? At least it helps you learn how to break bad news, mm -hmm. um, pain management, mm -hmm. which pain management, you know how difficult it mm -hmm. is within our healthcare setups. Mm -hmm. You write morphine, no one mm -hmm. wants to give morphine, mm -hmm. but having learned palliative, we've learned that morphine is not as bad as what we learned in yeah. under graduate yeah. but now at least yeah. that is manageable and you involve the hospice yes and you involve the whole team social okay. worker the hospice yeah. plus the client plus the family yeah. mm. i hope you'll join family medicine we'll see. <laughs> thank you uh, in conclusion what i've come to find out is that family medicine is a very special speciality in that it's caters for a lot of people, from the young to the old. That is very appealing to me. And just because of that, I could actually seriously consider family medicine as a speciality I would want to do in the future. As a county of Elgia Marakwet, we still require more uh, family physicians. Because one is that a family physician is also an educator. He educates the communities. So we will, uh, we will want to impress the program. We will want to have more doctors. We have already uh, talked to the team that is, they are doing internship that anybody who is interested in uh, family medicine, we can see how the county government will get Marakwet and be able to support a few that are willing to go for uh, family medicine and come back to the county and work and support the people. <laughs> Kenya needs family physician because they are ideal for the population. They'll be able to look after the majority of the people in the country effectively, knowing that they are trained to look after the entire family. A few things have been shown clearly. One, and it's a WHO recommendation, that to make healthcare as cost-effective as possible, the majority of the doctors in any nation should be family physicians. I think that the future for family medicine is bright. And I think that as we get more, people will become more aware and more young doctors will come into this speciality. So I see them having a major role in the healthcare as it is. moment there are five universities that offer a family medicine training. Moy University in Eldoret, Maseno University near Kisumu, Kabarak University near Nagaru, Kenyaki University in Nairobi and the Akakan University in Nairobi. <laughs>